Hi, my name is Mia Malena. I live in Norway and five years ago I had a neck surgery in Barcelona done by Dr. Gillette and Dr. Oliver. So I have fused C0 to C6 and I can only move 10% um, after that. And this is as good as it gets, you know, it's not supposed to move any further than that. That's why you get fused. So I have uh, people writing to me on Instagram and on this YouTube channel. Um, I'm very sorry that I haven't been replying to the, the comments here on this YouTube channel. I actually kind of forgot that I had one. Um, I'm mostly on Instagram, but I see that a lot of the questions I have I get is the same questions over and over again. So I decided to make a new video and maybe, maybe answer some of your questions. So first question is always like, what symptoms did you have before the surgery? Because you want to relate and see if that's the symptoms you have, right? And I think that that's, um, that's not a way to go because my symptoms were very different from the other people that done the same surgery as I did. Um, some people just lie in bed all the time. Some people has EDS, I, I don't have that. My injury is from a car accident, not from EDS. So that's also rem important to remember. If you have EDS, then, then uh, maybe you were more in bed before the surgery than I was. So I could function on many levels before the surgery to have, I, um, I was a mother, I'm still a mother, uh, to a small child for many when he was young. And uh, I had uh, work, I had my own company um, and I was working, yes, but not I didn't have a job where I had to be early in the morning and until the afternoon I could like balance my own time, which was important for me with my injury. So, but the most painful for me was, um, it felt like a screwdriver was going into my head, like always screwing. So it was like always some, some weird pain. And also that I couldn't hold my head up. Uh, it was heavy. So every time I was sitting down, you know, I was holding my head like this. And if I was standing up for a long time, I would just, you know, hold my head like this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so holding my head was definitely one of the worst things. But for me, it wasn't, I hear that you guys have a lot of symptoms. For me, it was just painful. And the pain was taking my energy. Um, yeah, I think it's also like if your body is strong from before or if it's like weak from a lot of years of, I don't know, but everybody's different. So, and... How do I say that? Um, everybody deals with pain differently. And I don't just mean mentally. I also mean like everybody, everybody, not everybody, but everybody deals with pain differently. And my body can take a lot of pain and still function. So that's also very important that even though I was working and I was a mom, I still had a lot of pain, but maybe you couldn't see it on me. So um, my pain was quite hidden for the people that wasn't near me, me. That wasn't, but the people that was like close to me, they they got to see like how I was when I was in real pain. So. And why did I do the surgery if I could work? You know, many people ask that. Well, I, that's a, that's a good question because if you can work, you think life is perfect, but it's not. Uh, to have this pain all the time is 
it's very difficult and if you have this i know you know what i'm talking about the constant pain and some some pain you can live with and some pain you can't and there's also the fact that i had a very bad bad injury which was um, life threatening to me and um, the doctor said like i was in florida for a consult and the doctor told me that your injuries are so bad you should not leave this country before you do the surgery and that was about two three years before i did the surgery because i didn't have the money so the sur the injury was bad is was just a miracle how i could live and do stuff with these symptoms i i don't have an explanation for that except it's like my body can deal with a lot of pain obviously um i also went before the surgery to um to a guy who was like um, stabilizing my atlas atlas and but then he moved and that's kind of i was to him like i went to him like i don't know once a month or something but every time i got like fixed it always was like after some time it just like the neck it wasn't stable it wouldn't the whatever he did to fix it it wouldn't stay so it just slided out again and the pain came back yeah so when this treatment stopped i decided i couldn't live like this um so i decided to do the surgery mm, now let's see uh so the reason i choose chose dr gillette in barcelona was because in florida which was an option for me um you didn't stay in a hospital after that and in barcelona you stay in a hospital for 12 up to 12 days after the surgery and then you go to a hotel and stay there for a week or two i don't remember quite and then you come back for check out check up before you leave the country so those 12 days after the surgery was um and you will bring another person with you that stay in the, this room with you and uh, they make up an extra bed for this person and even though you have nurses all the time it's really good to have somebody with you because you need the moral support um, but to be in a hospital when you really need that so first thing go to a place that has a place where you can stay in the hospital after the surgery that's like super important because there's medication there's like new pain you don't understand where it's coming from you need to see the doctors you know sometimes you get too much i had morphine here i had morphine here i had morphine like all over the coming inside to my body and at one point i had too much morphine and i got really crazy so that too you know you need doctors to talk to and after the surgery for example you know they stiff uh, the neck like not they're not sew sewing you together they're using stifts and um, a couple of days after the surgery they saw that they had to do more stifts you know they have to like that that's not painful at all actually that's quite funny yeah um the mris uh, and and uh, my the mri and my uh, mm. diagnosis i i uploaded when dr gillette is telling me about them i uploaded that long time ago in another video so if you go to my videos you can watch that and uh, I decided actually I there's a lot of you guys that do a lot of work before the surgery you're talking to people what what will this look like what will it be like I didn't do anything of that you know I I knew that I needed the surgery that was it I just went for it I booked the tickets I, I booked the appointment I already saw another doctor to many doctors who confirmed my injuries before the surgery 
So I, I knew they will all agree on the same problem. So I had a video call with Dr. Gillette and he saw my pictures and, and then I just booked the surgery. So, but yeah, of course the surgery is a lot of money. I, we were two people in my family who sold our apartments, our houses and to get money for the surgery. Uh, I also had a fundraising, so it's quite expensive. Yeah. Um, many people told me like that I'm so brave to do the surgery, but the thing was that I didn't know what I was doing, right? I didn't know the pain and uh, how painful it was. And, and uh, you shouldn't know either, you know, and this surgery, if you're if you're like thinking, okay, she only had these symptoms, but I have these symptoms, you know, stop, stop doing the symptom stuff. If you have an injury and you tried everything, you know, and it's not working, you, and you decide that, you know, it's like life or death. You know, that, that it's just that simple. If your life if there's no way to live like this, then you have to do the surgery. Um, but don't do the surgery because you have the same symptoms and me and blah, blah, blah. Just think about your life. And if there's no way to go forward, if you don't know any options, if you tried the, all the possibility treatments there is for you and it didn't work, then I always say like surgery is the last thing to do um, because you should be out of options. I know some people who did the stem cells instead of the surgery and I was actually thinking about that. Um, I heard somebody did it like just a couple of months before my surgery and I was thinking should I or should I not but I already made up my mind so I did the surgery and I heard that some people who had the stem cell uh, they used like half a million of that and um, it didn't work so I'm quite happy that I did the surgery yeah okay so about the time after the surgery uh, I was first one one day in a coma I don't know if everybody's in a coma but I really recommend it because it's painful to wake up and I guess it's even more painful if you're not in a coma uh, the first day. So, and actually when I woke up from the coma, I, I forgot that they took out two of my ribs so I could only feel the pain in my ribs actually. So I was like, shit, did they do this surgery wrong? You know, I was supposed to have a neck surgery, not some surgery here, but after some time, you know, I think the pain in my neck was too high to kind of feel the pain, if that is like possible to understand. Um, yeah, to wake up from a coma, you have this thing in your mouth, you cannot like breathe normally and you have to like wait till somebody come and get this out of you. Um, that's like really scary. The, the next, I lost a lot of blood during my surgery. Um, I, I also didn't want to have blood. So I, I bought extra, like I paid extra for this machine that was cleaning my blood in case something would happen. Uh, and actually I lost so much blood that this machine couldn't uh, clean the blood that, and you know, this machine, it kind of goes, the blood goes out of you, it gets cleaned and then they can use it back into your own body. But I lost, lost so, so much blood that this machine didn't work fast enough to clean my blood. So they actually had to, to, um, to run up uh, to my, my support person and, um, and ask if they should give me blood or not. And, you know, there's a possibility that you don't, um, you don't live without the blood in the surgery, which was my case here. So, so they gave me blood. And I'm 
quite happy for that. Thank you. So um, when I woke up from the surgery, it was a lot of pain, but also I lost the vision. Uh, I could only see on one eye and I couldn't quite get it. So, and the reason for that was because I lost so much blood. So on day two, I think I had blood transfer into my body, which, um, which gave me my sight back. I also had to, they, uh, not me, but the surgeons, they had to cut over a lot of nerves because my surgery was complicated because of the blood and everything. And, um, and uh, this could happen, they said, when they opened me up, it looked differently, you know, and um, I'm used to that. Nothing with me is normal. I heard that before. So, of course, my my neck anatomy was not normal either. Or how can I explain that? So, yes, it was a difficult surgery, but they made it. Um, but they had to cut up, cut some nerves because they had to do the surgery in the old way, I think. Without, I cannot explain this any further. I'm sorry. Um, but after surgery, you kind of don't, you don't, you don't care about how the surgery is done. You know, you just want to, you're just happy you woke up and you just want to get better. Yeah. So I didn't ask a lot of things about the surgery I was just happy they gave me blood so I survived the surgery but when they cut off some nerves after the surgery I don't know which day it was but then my head was filled with pain because I lost the feeling of the back head like from here and down and the feeling when this happens you to lose the feeling means that it gets replaced with um, with pain so you know there's a lot of pain coming into your head and and it was super scary actually uh, i was really scared i didn't understand what was happening so we called the doctors which is also good that you're in hospital because stuff like this can happen so we called the doctor and he said that i was like what is happening uh is this like losing the feeling of the back and he confirmed that this was what's happening uh, so for a year or two i couldn't like touch the back of my head and um, if you can see i'm i still have this uh, undercut and that's because um is because i i can't touch my head now but it's like painful with a lot of hair and um yeah and I work out a lot, so it's like easier to with less hair uh, because of the neck uh, surgery. Like the scar, um, it's kind of painful when the hair grows out. But I, I'm the only person who does this. I know many people who had the surgery and they have their hair. So it's only me, I think. Um, but what else? Okay, so after the surgery, Yes, waking up, it's like waking up in hell. Um, and if you're scared of the, the pain after the surgery, then I don't think you have enough pain now. So, you know, if you, if you have so much pain that you, you're considering taking your life, then this surgery is for you. Um, if you think you can have a beautiful life without the surgery you can deal with the pain yes no problem then don't do the surgery so but uh, the surgery can give you more pain too like for example I didn't have shoulder pain like this before the surgery but after the surgery I have a lot of shoulder pains I got pain in my head also, I have a lot of pain in my stomach area where I took out two ribs and I don't recommend using your own ribs because I have a lot of, um, yeah, it's been painful, uh, this. So you fix your neck, but sometimes I guarantee you, you will have other issues after 
So you have to, again, consider if you need the surgery or not. You know, are you going to kill yourself or not? It's super, it's actually super easy. Um, yeah. Sorry to say, but that's the thing. So don't worry about what diagnosis, no, I mean, diagnosis is okay, but don't think about like, if I had this and you don't, maybe it's not the same, blah, blah, blah. If you have so much pain, you don't know how to live your life, then surgery is for you. And after surgery, yes, I have problems with my head. I have shoulder problems. I have problems here, but it's nothing compared to the pain I had in my neck. And I don't have neck pain like that anymore. The only pain I have kind of is my in my neck is I can feel the screws are there and I don't have know how to explain that better um, than I could feel on my, my screws. Yeah. Um, okay, so after the surgery, I say like the first six days are in hell. Uh, you're just lying in your bed. You cannot move anywhere. People have to come in and and dress you, and or you're not even dressed, but like clean you, and and um, yeah, you cannot get up. You're just eating, lying, and it's just six days with a lot of lot of pain, which you have to be strong in and you need people there to support you during those six days because you kind of lose every sense and you're drugged all the time and um, yeah it's it's just really really hard to do those six days yeah I think the first, I'm getting tears in my eyes. Um, yeah, the first six, six days are in hell. It feels like train, like drove over me. I, I had pain, not just in my neck, but in my whole body. I wasn't prepared at all for this surgery. And I'm happy that I wasn't because, um, uh, you know, it's harder to do the surgery when you know too much. So I'm not going to tell in details, but I'm going to say that after six days in hell, the seventh day, I was walking. And this is where the changes starts. So the nurses, they were asking from day four, day five, like, do you want help to get up from bed? Do you want to try to walk? And I was like, no, no, I'm going to make it on my own. I don't need anybody's help. And on day seven, I, I've been trying to get out of bed for days, but I couldn't do it myself. So I said, okay, help me out, please. And, I'm, and you need people to back you, you know, one on each side to hold you so you don't go to the floor and I, I took my first steps and the first steps are so hard I mean like I think I went like four meters and I was so tired I had to get sit down um, but I moved from this from the bed to the chair which is in your room it's like this in every room everybody's talking about the same you know walking to the chair that's the, the main thing that you have to be focused on and and it's uh, different to walk with a stiff neck um, because it feels very heavy in the beginning because your body is not used to having this stiff neck so it's a new yeah it's a new thing um, but when I came to the chair it was like wow I, then I understood why they, the nurses have been pushing me, why they wanted me to go to the chair. And I was like, I don't care about that chair. But when I got there, the chair was like, wow, <laughs> it was amazing. And uh, the day after that, I went up from my bed again, with help, I think. But 
then I was in a wheelchair and we went out from the hospital it's a beautiful hospital and we went out and I was lying on the bench I think there's a video from that somewhere and I was just lying on the bench like so so happy that I was outside like I was just you know the birds if you have if you have been there then the birds you know what I'm talking about they're just singing for you every time you get out and lying there is amazing yeah it's amazing so yeah I was there in the first six days six days in hell then you get up if you're lucky you can get up on day five if you're smart then you will ask for help before day seven so you don't have to wait so long like I did um, and um, and then you just you know every day is about getting up getting out going from the wheelchair learning to walk without with his neck uh, get to the shower which is really complicated the first time just sitting on the toilet with a new neck is like it's it's hard everything is hard you cannot after the surgery it's like i could hold the glass not after after like seven 14 days after the surgery i could like hold my own glass and eat by myself um but you know they did surgery here so your arms are also you know they have to learn how to move again and uh, I remember like two and a half months after the surgery, I was going to make a taco, which is very popular in Norway. So you have to, you know, you have to cook something, uh, the meat. I don't eat meat anymore, by the way. Um, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't hold the pan. I, I just, it wasn't possible. I, it was too heavy for my arms. Um, yeah and the dressing yourself that's not possible either i think it was one half months before i could dress myself um, after 12 days we checked into a hotel and we stayed there for i don't know three weeks or something and uh, some day after the transport like from the hospital to there I was, it was just a taxi and not far away actually, but just those 30 minutes on the travel from the hospital to there. I was so tired. I slept for 13 hours and um, yeah, I was really tired. And uh, so the days after, you know, it's um, walking is like a big thing. You get up, you try to eat breakfast, you try to dress yourself, you know, you're constantly moving, trying to do new things, going out, going for a walk. I remember just going around the hotel was a big deal. And when I could walk to the park, it was like, wow, you know, without a wheelchair, that was amazing. I could walk to a cafe, um, oh, wow, it was beautiful. <sighs> Yeah, what more? To go to the pharmacy to get your own drugs. Yay! You know? <laughs> um, yeah, what else? I, I left the wheelchair in the hospital. I didn't bring my own. I, I wasn't in a wheelchair before the surgery either. I was not using a neck collar before the surgery either because I didn't like it. Um, I have this thing like if I was so tired that I couldn't hold my head then it was enough for me I, I went to bed and rest instead of putting on the neck collar because that would just like I would just um, do more like and my, and my neck was tired so I shouldn't and it's the same now um, if I use my neck collar I will have a little bit more you know but I, I don't use it. I, I was recommended to use it after the surgery. Uh, but actually I took it off after a couple of days. I don't 
or maybe just two days. But it was recommend, really recommend to have it on all time. But I asked like, why should I have it? You know, my, my neck is like stable now. So I don't understand the point of this, uh, of this neck collar. And it was just for safety. So I just figured I don't want to do that. So I didn't. Um, also, it's recommend to have when you're in a flight or in a car. I don't know for how long, but I never use it. I use it when I'm on an airplane. And that is because when you are on an airplane and you have a stiff neck, if you fall asleep, you will have this small like, you know, you're like sliding to the side. And this is quite painful in the neck because you cannot, you know, lay down. So something in the neck is like making this, you know, crappy feeling. So to have some sleep, I sleep with my neck collar um, on the airplanes. I don't travel. I don't like to travel for a long time sitting. Um, but that's another problem. So... Um, yeah, I'm about that other problem. So I have problem from my neck. I have problems in my shoulders. That's like the main problem for me. And also a little bit here. Um, one and a half year ago. So like three years after the surgery. Um, I got paralyzed from uh, in my legs. So I couldn't walk for, I think it was three days. I was in a hospital had to learn to walk again um, but this has nothing to do with the surgery uh, and I don't talk so much about it because people can get confused like is that from the surgery or not but it's not it has nothing to do with the surgery but it means that I have pain in my, in my feet in my legs in my hips uh, which I have to control and I have to be careful how, you know, I have to treat my body well. Um, yeah. So, but that was another thing. So, but after three months, you know, I was so certain I could never swim again, for example. But um, family member told me like, you know, just go swimming. If you drown, I will save you. So I tried and it was working. Uh, to swim forward like this is like you cannot move your neck so you have to you know use your stomach to pull you up so I think it's I think it's a little bit hard not hard I can do it but I don't want to swim for 30 minutes like this so instead I learned how to swim on the back um, and in the beginning it's like it's it was painful in the neck to have to use one and one arm like crawling on the back so i actually was swimming with both arms up like this and of course since i cannot move my head it was like going underwater every time i was going up the head was going underwater so but i learned some cool techniques and uh, you just have to kind of try and yeah but after a while i got stronger in my my neck and I could swim like one arm you know yeah but uh, after a year of swimming I was swimming like three four times a week um, that I started at three months after the surgery and uh, after a year I was swimming too fast so you know when you swim from here to there and you swim so fast you know it's like it doesn't feel like exercise anymore so and I hit my head in the yeah in the in the pool, so it wasn't so nice anymore. So I had to find something else. So that's when I start practicing yoga. Um, and I love that, and I actually became a yoga teacher. I have a yoga education in um, Vinyasa yoga, Yin yoga, children yoga um restorative yoga yin yoga i said i i think yeah so a lot of them and uh, now i'm a yoga teacher i teach some classes a week um 
and uh, I think that's really nice. And one of the reasons I like to teach yoga is because I always have to do it myself, you know, to to plan a class. I have to do it myself, and and then you're making yourself all the time to do better, you know. So yes, um, but now it's been so after one year one year and three months after the surgery i start doing yoga this was not recommended from dr gillette but i did it anyway i'm happy that i did it i understand that he cannot recommend stuff like doing yoga for example or other sports um because then if something goes wrong then you will hold him responsible and that's not right so he has to say no to more things than necessary i think and uh, that's okay i think the most important thing is that you do it and you see how you feel after and if you feel okay then do it again that's what i did so um yeah so in my instagram profile which is like mia malena queen for now um i put out poses of like going skiing or yoga poses that i practice on and stuff and uh, some poses are really hard with this with a fused neck and some poses are not possible but um i lost after i start practicing like for real i also uh, lost 20 kilos which was good for me and um I'm much, I'm much stronger. Um, I also became a vegan. And the reason for that is because when you eat meat, you use a lot of energy to, to process the food. And I wanted to use this energy on me instead of processing the food. So that's why I'm a vegan. Um, I save energy. And also they say that, you know, you get less like uh, pain infection stuff like that i haven't got less pain but i got more energy so that's nice um yeah one more i can't say that i'm working more now than i did before actually maybe less i'm not sure but the thing is that surgery kind of uh, put a stop for me like now I know I, I, I can't just work for many hours anymore and uh, just you know take a pill or something you know my my body actually says stop you know I have to do something else that's like office work then I like to work in offices uh, like papers companies so I do that also um, but to sit for hours is uh, painful for me. So, and that's not because of the neck, that's because of my hip, you know, and my legs from being paralyzed. Yeah. Um, so what else? Yes, so the diagnosis you can see in another video. I, I'm not going to spend time on answering that um now i um i know that there are some people who had the same surgery as me who get botox in the shoulders because of the pain and uh, and then they can function like super nice after that the hospital here in norway they don't want to give me those botox so i don't have that I know that there's people who had this surgery who don't have a good life. They don't exercise. I think that's really, really bad. Uh, I think that the reason that I'm so good after the surgery is because I was, I was going to the gym, I was exercising, I was doing yoga, I was swimming. Yeah, I was active, I was walking. The thing that I could do after the surgery was only walking for a lot of months but i did a lot of walking like i could walk for two hours you know just 
I didn't have anything else to do anyway, right? So I was just um, I was just walking, and um, yeah, you need help in your house like the three the first three months. At at least I did. Um, so somebody to cook for you, uh, maybe help you shower, you know, the first month month first one and a half month you cannot cook anything yourself you cannot get dressed yourself at least i couldn't so you need somebody there like 24 7. um yeah and uh, the pain yeah i'm sorry but surgery is is very scary and and um and it's very painful surgery Things can go wrong. You can actually die from the surgery, but I mean, you can do that in every surgery. Uh, but this is, it's a risky, it's a risky surgery, definitely. And I know one person that have died. I know another person who had um, like um, a problem in her leg after the surgery because her nerves got uh, injured so she has a lot of pain and had problem walking still and this is going to be for the rest of her life probably i know people who has uh, loose like broken screws after the surgery i mean like everything can happen Ev literally everything can happen um so don't do the surgery if you can live your life as now and if you live your life like you're working and you're stressed and and you use a lot of time to like think about this what are your next step i mean i mean it's a full-time job just finding people to treat you right so try to see before you do the surgery try to see if you can just not work if you have people to take care of you not work just focus on your breath i'm a yoga teacher you know that's what i do now i focus on my breath i wish i did this before the surgery i don't think it would have made any difference because my my neck was so destroyed um but i wish i started it earlier um uh, I wish I started earlier. So take some time off, you know, go out to the nature, go out in the woods and just feel, feel your pain, feel where you're hurting and, and see what you feel. Like, is this a life you can live like this or not? And then you have the answer. And uh, don't use your time to find you know of course you can talk to people who had the surgery but it's like what do you want them to say like it's like going to hell it's a painful surgery you will feel so lost and so fucked up but it's not going to help you because if you need to take that decision and that choice you have to do it it doesn't matter how much pain you have after the surgery so um yeah so the people that don't do the surgery they they decide that they can live with the pain and uh, the people that do the surgery they cannot live with the pain or the neck is so uh, badly hurt destroyed that it's risky to to live with it right and um, for me, it was, for example, dangerous for me to look to, to the left side because my head could get stuck there. And I mean, who would want that? Mm, okay, what else? Now, my days, it's like five years after, five and a half year after the surgery, actually. Uh, my child is only grown up now. I have more time to myself. 
I'm exercising like twice in a day. Uh, it's like different. Sometimes it's in the gym. Sometimes it's walking in the woods. It's yoga. It's, um, it's different things. But I always, I always, uh, I'm always moving. Um, trying to at least, or trying to, I'm always moving. Yeah. Um, hmm. What else? I still drive a car um, and it helps to do yoga because you're flexible and uh, but I have extra mirrors in my car um, and whatever the doctor is telling you like you should stop doing this and maybe you can't do that I think don't listen to the doctor because <laughs> okay if dr gillette sees this then it's like don't listen to the doctor what i mean is remember the doctor has to recommend what is safe for the doctor right so it doesn't mean that it's right for you so if your life joy is uh, to play golf you know i know that there's somebody who loves that so just try it you know a year after surgery or something just try it see if it's possible see if your body can you know move in a different way probably maybe and maybe you can still do it um like yoga there is a lot of things i cannot do but i just i find a way to do it you know in my way and i find another way to do the pose so i don't do the pose like 100 percent correct but at least i'm doing the pose so yeah, there's a lot of ways to happiness. Um, for me, the surgery was very good. Um, I'm happy that I don't have to hold my head anymore. I don't have this constant pain. Uh, I'm safe. I am, by the other hand, uh, saving up for a new surgery because I know that if I have a fall or if something should happen my screws go like my screws can be like destroyed uh, they can break then i need another surgery and uh, yeah i just i just like to be prepared you know i don't want to like be the girl who has to sell or her all her stuff you know to to get another surgery so i just want to be prepared because i want to live for many many more years I hope I can do that. Um, the most pain I have now is nerve pain. And sometimes it's really frustrating. Um, I don't take any, medica any medication anymore. I stopped doing that. Um, I, I take medication for um, not many sleeping pills. For sleeping because it's very important for me to, to sleep and so I could have a normal day after um, I always have a thousand things to do so I don't want to waste my time you know being tired and about that is like when you do the surgery you kind of like you you buy yourself some years that's what you're doing you know because you're at this point where where you don't see life anymore so you're doing the surgery because because you're planning your your funeral right so you don't want to do that you want to live you do the surgery and when you have a surgery you just realize that shit this can all go down too you know this can break and i have a life where i'm really happy <laughs> i i love my son i love my life i have so many good people in my life and i love my jobs and uh, the nature and forests like wow this world is amazing and i want to keep living in it and but someday you know i don't know if it will in one year five twenty 40 years from now maybe i need another surgery and i want to be you know secured that when i need the surgery i have the money and i can just you know go and do the surgery 
And I was thinking that after the surgery, I was thinking like, I will never ever do this surgery again. But this surgery is like giving birth. If you did it once, you will say like, I'm never doing that again. But then your child is coming out and you love the child and it's like amazing. This love is amazing. And you forget the pain, you know, because the life after is amazing. And that's the same with the surgery. You know, it's been five years. I was thought I was never doing the surgery again, but life is amazing. And um, I think, you know, I, I will probably do the surgery again because I have, uh, I have a son and I want grandchildren. Yeah. So, yeah. But after the surgery, um, I'm not 100% well. I have the, the pains I have, which is kind of not in my neck, except from the screws that I feel. And I don't call that pain. I just call it like not cool, kind of. Um, but the, I still have to, you know, I'm, I'm still not... I'm not a healthy person. I mean, I'm a healthy person, but I, my body's in pain. So I still have to, you know, my job is to work out. My, my number one job is to work out and take care of myself and relax and give myself pauses when I work to go to the woods, enjoy, you know, being happy first. And after that, you know, after I've been working out, I'm happy, I'm working, working out in the woods, enjoying my son, whatever, then I can set up time to, you know, friends, being social, doing all these things. Um, because I have to be balanced first. Yeah. So beautiful to start today with the yoga practices and um, do some work that's what I usually do I work for a couple of hours I go to the forest to the woods get some air come back yeah. maybe do some more computer work because I love that too and um, you know in the weekends and the nights I, I hang out with friends or I teach yoga and when I teach yoga, I also am I'm social, so I like that. Um, yeah. So I hope this video explained some things. Uh, I had a blog before, which I was, but I don't know. I don't feel like sharing all the things, so I I took down the blog actually. Uh, but I won't delete these videos and um, yeah, I will keep post this video too and hope this will help you in some way. And if you comment on it, I will pay attention this time and I will answer in the comments. So, okay, let's see what more. Um, Yes, skiing, by the way. I remember people ask me like what kind of exercise you can do after and stuff, but you just, I mean, you can basically do everything. You just have to do it in your way, kind of. Like uh, I do cross country skiing, like um, skiing like this in with your legs. So it's like fast skiing. <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. And uh, I'm just actually getting better and better after the surgery. Uh, because when I did it before the surgery, I was always tired. It was, you know, and uh, actually this winter was, uh, it was like, wow, amazing. I learned some new techniques. And, uh, you know, I could uh, go further and faster than ever. So, yeah. I can't say that I go faster on, on swimming because I stopped doing that, so I'm really bad at that. Um, but I, I do skiing, I do yoga, I go to the gym. Um, yeah, 
if you take like if you go to the gym and you do a lot of exercise if i do a lot of exercises uh relating on my neck like i mean my shoulders then i can have some kind of a pain in my neck um so you have to balance you know not go too fast slow um and and there's a lot of good exercises you can do without uh, lifting heavy um, but I remember in the hospital somebody told me that by lifting um, like with weights something would happen in the nerve system that would give you like the whole nerve system would kind of change so you would feel less pain in some time and uh, I know one person actually who has had a neck injury but didn't take any pictures it was a long time ago but he went to the gym for years and he got like this big neck from exercising right and he was really big but he didn't have a lot of pain so and i'm not saying that you can i'm not saying that if you have neck injury you just go to the gym and you will get well i think that if you have a smaller neck injury like a whiplash or something, then maybe you can get well by going to the gym. If you have a, a, a bad neck injury, uh, then go to the gym after the surgery, you know? Yeah. Before the surgery, when I was to the, I went to the gym there also actually, but I was there like maybe three, four times, uh, you know, just enough to get membership in the club. And then my neck would just say no, and I couldn't do it anymore. And so I waited maybe a month or two, or and I went back, and uh, same thing happened again. You know, I never got any results because I couldn't, um, because I couldn't continue doing it for a long time. Um, yeah, but now I see results, so that's quite fun. I see in yoga, I see that my body changed, of course, I lose 20 kilos, but I also see that things that was hard before is not hard anymore. So I got better at this, of course, you get after four years of practicing, but um, the point is that before the surgery, I wasn't able to, to keep continuing exercising because I started I lost it, you know, because of pain. And then when I, the pain was balanced, I tried to go back to the gym, but then, yeah, it wasn't working. Yeah. Okay, so that's all for me. There was like 58 minutes talking. I think that's enough for now. Um, yeah. Uh, and uh, the doctor, Dr. Gillette, uh, I don't know so much about Dr. Oliver because I met him once before the surgery and then he was joining the surgery with Dr. Gillette. Um, so Dr. Oliver, I don't have, um, I can't say so much about him. I don't know what he did under my surgery either. And after the surgery it was mostly Dr. Gillette that I talked to. I'm very happy with him as a surgeon. Uh, he, he not kind of simulated that he did and um, yeah I'm grateful and after the surgery I said like see you never and I really hope that I never see him again <laughs> because that means that I don't need another surgery right so I didn't go back after a year you're supposed to go back you know to have a, a consult I didn't do that because I didn't want to see him again. <laughs> it's just stupid, but you know, so I try not to go there. Sometimes I've been emailing them and they're very fast to, to email you back. And I love that. And, uh, you know, because sometimes, for example, like two years after the surgery, I actually fell on my bike and, you know, I, I fainted and ended up in the hospital and, and I went with my forehead first in, in the ground. Oh my God, it was 
you know i couldn't look at a computer for and my phone for four months i was so off you know i got this my brain was not working and but i was so scared that my neck you know had some injuries that i lost some screws were fucked up or something and uh, but it wasn't and i also had uh, other examples where i thought that you know shit i have a lot of pain now you know in periods of my life i have a lot of pain in my neck area kind of and i think that one of my screws are loosened or something but still it just happened actually where i thought one of my screws were loose and i just like a week ago i got confirmed that my screws are just fine so yeah, I'm, I'm not this person that just sits on the couch and I'm always out trying new adventures and uh, and sometimes I worry because, uh, you know, yeah, I'm like, shit, what did I do now? Are my screws broken? But actually, I think, uh, like, my screws are okay, but I think the most dangerous thing for me is stress. Being stressed in um, in the daily day life, you know, don't have the time to to step back to to practice like yoga practice or some other practice to not to just be so stressed with it could be like with friends or family or kids or work, you know, to have this constant stress that is not working for me. Um, I need to have family and friends and work where they understand my situation where i can just go back and relax you know and um, if i need to walk in the mountains i will do that um, so i need flexibility to work that's the most important thing for me okay i wish you the best if you decide to do the surgery you know send me a heads up a week before and i'll be praying for you and um really i i wish you the best and um uh, remember the first six days in hell that better days will come i'm sure